So behind me here is a lion feeding on an elephant. This is the travel we love, when it truly feels like you're on another planet. The wilderness of Africa is unlike any other. It gets under your skin. Join us as we visit a national park in Tanzania that's off the beaten track, full of wildlife, not tourists. We embark on our first safari experience in style <laughs> and get up close and personal to the wildlife. Just I'll never forget this. Subscribe to join us on this experience of a lifetime as we explore Ruaha. Welcome to Ruaha! First things first, we took a tiny plane for about three hours into the middle of nowhere. So I'm not scared of flying, but it is Friday the 13th. <laughs> we were met at the landing strip by living legend Julius. He would be our guide for the next three days. Hey. <laughs> so today is Friday, a lot of kids that are just coming to have their day trips and all that. That's why you'll be seeing uh, some of the vehicles are passing and uh, Tanzania is promoting domestic tourism right now, yeah? Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So we haven't even made it to camp yet, but we've already seen an elephant, we've seen some impalas, we've seen a giraffe, so it's safe to say this is going to be epic. We received a warm welcome from the Nomad Tanzania team had lunch and we were shown to our room. Doba, doba. So this is an elephant poo and this is where we have lunch. So it is not uncommon to see elephants walking through the camp apparently and we've been told that we need to be escorted back and forth at night time because there could be big dangerous animals in the camp and we need a professional around. So we, it just goes to show how much we are in the wilderness. It's amazing. So what can you see there? That is two giraffes right there, right next to the camp. We haven't even left the camp and we there's two giraffes just there. It's, we're here like five minutes. Then straight back into the Land Rover. So your water bottles are here. So we're off for our first drive, our first safari drive. Is that what you call it, a safari no, a drive? Game, yeah, yeah, yeah. Game this, drive. Uh, it's a game drive, an evening one, yeah? Julius has just told us that apparently this whole area is yeah. lion galore. Ten, did you say 10% of all yeah, lions in the world? Yeah, 10% of the all lions that are found in the world are found here in Ruaha, so hopefully we're going to see some of the exciting lions today, yeah? Brilliant, yeah. let's Perfect. do it. Yeah, we cross our thumbs, though. <laughs> Our first official safari experience, and it did not disappoint. We met this large lone bull, an older elephant exiled from the herd. Feeding on grass, he was showing off remarkable dexterity with his strong trunk. I'm getting aggressive. Too close. We then saw some of the less renowned, but still very cool animals. A male impala and some guinea fowl, aka disco chickens, running along the road. But then we came across the animal a lot of people come on safari, especially to see. So behind me here is a lion feeding on an elephant. And it is just the most surreal thing to experience. This is him in his natural habitat. Just, it's just unbelievable. This is what makes all those flights, all the everything worth it. And it's so strange because we are so close to this just like beast that could just tear us apart if it wanted to. But it just doesn't care that we're here. It's common to see lions, but lions killing an elephant, that's rare, for real. I think this is my second time in my career that I've seen this. Uh, so it's quite rare. And uh, as you can see, that was a baby elephant. So maybe it could have been left alone. It didn't have, the mother was not close by, something like that. Scavengers were lingering. The rarely seen, fierce hunting dogs had one eye on the leftovers. And of course, vultures, 
always patiently waiting for their turn. We left the lion to it and went to the local watering hole for a sunset drink, known here as a sundowner. We went home for a nice early night, ready for an early morning. We woke with the beautiful African sunrise, with a welcomed, refreshing chill in the air. We drove as night turned to day, excited for what was going to be a very special experience. Of all the places to go on a hot air balloon ride. another first we've never been on a hot air balloon and I can't believe that we're here this has been a bucket list thing for me and the fact that we're doing it here is just... yeah <laughs> can't think of anywhere much better to do it than here <laughs> we rose up gracefully gliding over the savannah the roar of the flame lifting us sometimes would be far above the ground below giraffes in our shadow then we'd be gliding over the baobao trees, startled monkeys looking up at us. From this point of view, the landscape seemed to go on forever. An infinite painting. otherworldly being able to see this landscape from so high <laughs> up above to see the giraffes and they look miniature but also we were really low and just gliding just over the trees which was really awesome as well and i wasn't afraid i thought i might be afraid because i struggle with heights sometimes but for me this feels absolutely fine it's so calming it's a lovely speed yes, it's so very relaxing <laughs> and really peaceful as well, other than the flame. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, this place here will do. We can land here. We braced ourselves for a bumpy landing. <laughs> oh! Oh my God! That was Ace! <laughs> that was so gentle. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't get that better than that. <laughs> Amazing, 10 out of 10 landing. Can't ask for better. We were then told the myth of the origin of the traditional post-flight champagne. In France, in the 1780s, when hot air balloons were invented, most people believed the technology was witchcraft. And since you don't have control over where you land your balloon, the early balloon pilots would often find themselves being attacked by locals upon landing. This led to pilots packing a bottle of champagne as a peace offering to cool the temper of local pitchforks. So we have just arrived for breakfast and uh, as soon as we arrived they've already set up our makeshift toilet which is right here um, I really need to go and I thought I'd take you with me, not the full way but what does it say? It says Lou with a view Let's check it out There it is Little toilet, bit of toilet paper and off we go. And that's my view. <laughs> job with you guys. Didn't I take a great we enjoyed a beautiful breakfast in the shade of a baobab tree. Oh, thank you so much. We went straight into a morning game drive. So we just spotted a herd of elephants. They're just here under the tree and we've never seen so many. We've just seen one or two normally, but here is a whole group, look. Oh my God. Elephants were one of our favorite animals to spot, the gentle giants. They are one of the world's most intelligent animals, boasting exceptional memory skills, the ability to recognize themselves in the mirror, demonstrating self-awareness, 
and they can communicate over 10 miles using a low frequency sound. Not to mention how cute they are. The teeny tiny babies are nursing on their mom and Adam is very pleased with himself taking all the photos and getting all of the footage. It's truly a dream coming true. Just look at this, how close we are. Unbelievable. I didn't realize that we'd be able to get this close and to be so like safe. It feels so safe and they're so calm and they're so relaxed. It became a beautiful blur of eating, sleeping and seeing incredible animals. And not just the big ones either. We saw all sorts of wonderful wildlife. We were spoiled. It felt like we had the whole world to ourselves. It was a strange feeling, being completely immersed in something so spectacular, yet experiencing it from the comfort and safety of the Land Rover. We were right there, amongst the wildest of animals, like an almost invisible observer. So, we are surrounded by giraffes. And this is the amazing thing about Ruaha compared to, say, the Serengeti, is that we are here on our own. And there's, like, what, eight giraffes just around us, maybe even more. And it's sunrise, and we've just got this whole place to ourselves, and you just would not get that in the Serengeti at all. Pulsing <laughs> there. My little bird just landed. Life of poaching is very dangerous. We learned that a lot of the staff at Noma Tanzania didn't always have such a safe, comfortable job. I was poaching for getting me a money. Now I keep animals safe for next generation. Nomad's mantra is, talent is everywhere, opportunity is not. They train and educate locals, give them opportunities, and give back to the community. We staffs, we're getting a, an opportunity to, gain, to learn things that we didn't have before. It's very rare to get such an opportunity here in Tanzania, you see. It feels great to be traveling with and supporting a company that does everything it can to give back to the local community, not just exploit and profit from the people, landscape, and animals. Good morning, sleepyhead. Good morning. How did you sleep? I slept really well, apart from in the middle of the night. We could hear pretty loudly, actually, loads of lions. We've been assured that they were far away, but it didn't sound like they were far away. <laughs> they were roaring they were last roaring. night. So I'm having hot chocolate. Adam's having some coffee. One thing that you have to bear in mind when doing safari is that it's very early morning. Well, it's up to you though, isn't it? We've oh, chosen. Yeah. We, I mean, <laughs> we have chosen to torture ourselves. Yeah, much more regret <laughs> sometimes when we first wake up. Like, oh. <laughs> to wake up really early. But this is when you're going to see the most amount or have the highest amount of chance to see the most amount of game. So we are off in search of lions. And it's not that long ago that humans would have done absolutely anything to be as far away from lions as possible. <laughs> so far, we'd only seen one lion, but we'd been promised that there were more to be found. Nature calls and we have to stop by and I have to go to the toilet. So Julius has very kindly found me a nice little tree and has done a safety check so there's no lions there. Yeah, no lions, no leopards, so it's safe and sound. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we think that the lions are just up here around the same kill as before, around the uh, little elephant. Uh, but this time there are four of them rather than one. We found them, and in between catnaps, the area was a hive of activity. We saw a very protective male watching over his lioness. <coughs> and even witness a pair mating. So for me, lions were my favorite animal to see. And I know that that's perhaps quite an obvious choice, but they just gave me the most visceral reaction of any other animal. Just being so close to a creature that's clearly so powerful and scary, they just give off this aura of confidence. They're afraid of nothing. And you could just tell they knew that they were the kings. I still find it hard to believe that I was sitting there in a small van five meters or so away from actual lions. And I still couldn't get my head around how this was all safe. Obviously, a stupid question, but yeah. literally, if we were to just get out of the vehicle now, yeah. he'd attack us. Actually, yeah, it will, uh, it depends. Maybe it might be skittish because... It would be like, what the hell? Yeah, what the hell is this person doing? But uh, after seeing maybe this, this thing is just going to attack me, it will charge back, yeah? You see, so in charging there are two things, yeah, you never know. Because we are effectively food for yeah, it. Yeah, we are obviously food. We are food and yeah. we are sat like two meters away mm -hmm. from it. Yeah, and exactly. it's, it doesn't care, it's just there licking itself. Yeah, exactly. It's it just, just blows different. my mind. Yeah, sure. So searching for lions is hungry work. What? So we had to off to find a little breakfast spot of our own. Somewhere in the wilderness, hopefully, where we won't get attacked. Yeah. Yeah, this is a good spot for our breakfast this morning. It's kind of like van life, you know, just pulling up in these beautiful places for your breakfast or for your lunch. Even with our years of van life, I think this probably has to be right the best place that we've ever had breakfast. Look at this. Look at it. And I saw some wildebeest that are coming down here. They might be walking down the river. Julius said that if you're going to encounter any single animal, you're better off encountering a lion than you are a single buffalo because a single buffalo is mean and angry and will charge at you and does attack humans. So we're lucky that there's a herd of them because they're more chill that way. So we can enjoy our breakfast. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> Julius prepared a breakfast, still not quite believing our surroundings. Keeping our eyes out for lions, etc., we relaxed and ate our breakfast. So now that we've had our breakfast, next up is watching some elephants dig up for some water because they're thirsty too. Amazing, like this is your morning when you're on safari. Like imagine, oh there they are. And they've got babies. Oh, baby. You can't get anywhere fast in Ruaha. There is always wildlife to stop and see. Rain clouds seem to be forming. I'm gonna have a gin and tonic. Adam's gonna go with a ginger beer. Comment down below, what is your drink of choice? What would you have? Look at there's the bar. Yeah, so <laughs> let us know in the comments if you are here joining us, what drink are you gonna cheers us with? 
Tanzania. Thunder seemed to be rumbling in the distance. This is a tradition that they have here on Nomad Tanzania. On the last day of safari, the last full day of safari, you have a sundown drinks up here with this incredible view. But we are at the end of the season, so the rain looks like it's absolutely coming in. So I don't know if we're going to get much of a sundown. It's going to be just a cloud down, but still, look how dramatic and epic and beautiful it is up here. And we're in great company. We are in great company. Look at these legends. Mm -hmm. Ah, thank you very you much. Welcome. Happy days. Cheers. 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 Are you all drinking? Yeah, yes, you're having a whole sure. bottle. Cheers. <laughs> Raindrops seem to begin falling. Whoa! The rain is officially coming in. We just saw insane lightning and massive raindrop just got in my eye. Well done. Oh my God, the raindrops are getting too big for me. Oh my God, the raindrops are getting massive. Oh, Cheers, my love. Cheers. Tanzania. Subscribe to join us as we continue our African adventure. Coming up, we sleep next to hippos, hold the skulls of giants, walk in the footsteps of our ancestors, and climb Mount Kilimanjaro, the roof of Africa. Join us on this trip of a lifetime. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps us out more than we can say, and it helps others discover our films. Comment, I can't believe Adam saved Tanya from a lion, if you've made it this far.